Hi, this is Jay Schaefer with Skylapser.com. Today, in my Time Lapse 101 series, I'm going to talk about the intervalometer. And this is an external device uh, that you can buy for your camera setup. And there are some cameras that have built in intervalometers, but uh, in most cases, uh, I would use uh, an external intervalometer. And this is just kind of a generic. Uh, Chinese branded uh, intervalometer that I picked up on eBay and they're all pretty much the same thing and of course you can get these for whatever make or model of camera that you happen to have and it just the, your camera just has to have a remote input or an infrared remote or something like that and this particular remote it was made for my uh, Panasonic Lumix uh, GH uh, series camera, but you can obviously get these for uh, Nikon or Canon or Sony or whatever brand of camera that you use. Okay, when you get this, it basically is powered by a single AA battery, and these batteries last forever, and so that's really a good thing. And you basically turn uh, this on. And you'll notice that there are uh, five different uh, little labels here above the display and they are labeled DE, BU, INT, N, and then there's a little speaker icon. Okay, and this is typical for most of the uh, intervalometers that you would have these up there. And the kind of cryptic uh, settings are in uh, the order of display here is delay, bulb, interval, number of exposures, and whether or not you want it to beep. And um, the first uh, setting is delay, and this is the time between you, the time you press your start-stop button and the interval honor starts taking exposures. So if you wanted to set up an uh, unattended uh, time lapse, for example, and you wanted it to start uh, one minute after you press the start stop button is that you could go ahead and set the delay to one minute. So I'll just go ahead and do that really quickly as I just hit the enter button in the middle here and then I'll scroll over to the minute col col column and I'll press up once which will give me a one uh, minute uh, start time delay start time and I'll just press enter there. And so this is good if you're setting up a time lapse, for example, and you need to get out of the frame so you don't end up like you know the typical GoPro time lapse where you you get a picture of two or three frames of you looking into the camera. So so that's that's what the delay is handy for. The second one is bulb, and this is probably the uh, most difficult to understand of the intervalometer settings. And bulb is the time that the intervalometer tells the camera to take an exposure. Okay, and so that bulb value is can be set anywhere in, in seconds or minutes or hours on, on the intervalometer and that's how long the camera will be open to exposure. Okay, now there's a couple uh, things that you have to keep in mind with the bulb setting is that this just triggers the camera and says, okay, start your exposure. Okay, and then after a certain amount of time, it says, okay, stop your exposure. Now, if your camera has already got an exposure setting, so if you have a shutter speed set at, let's say, a 60th of a second, and you set your bulb at one second, the camera is still going to take a 60th of a second exposure because the camera's uh, exposure takes priority. However, if you set your camera to bulb, so it, it, there's usually in your shutter speed, if you scroll all the way to the longest setting, is there is a bulb setting. And then that basically relinquishes control to the external intervalometer. So when I'm shooting a night time lapse, for example, and I want to do a, let's say, 10 or even 15 second exposure, is I'll go ahead and set the camera to be bulb and then I will set the bulb value in the intervalometer to 15 seconds and then that will actually keep the shutter open on the camera for a duration of 15 seconds. Next and probably most important is interval. 
An interval is the time between taking exposures. Okay, so th this will, let's say that you set up an interval of 30 seconds, is that it would take 30 seconds between each time that the shutter was triggered. Okay, more typical values would be something like 1 or 2 or 5 or 10 seconds. Okay, and those, those would be typical values that you would use for daytime time lapses. And so there's some calculations involved of just how many exposures you want to take and how often that you want to take them so that uh, your, your time lapse, you know, uh, flows smoothly or covers the d amount of time that you want to. Um, that said, for daytime uh, time lapses where I'm, not, where I'm not too concerned with having to do long exposures is that I'll take uh, as many, uh, I'll, I would set the interval at one second and go ahead and do my time lapse because I can always uh, slow it down later on. Uh, but if I w were ha had the uh, interval set at five seconds, is then then I, I might not have enough material there. So as long as your camera has plenty of storage for exposures, why not take as many exposures as possible? Uh, but in the case of doing nighttime time lapses. A lot of times uh, you have to go with a longer interval and the reason for that is that your interval uh, has always got to be longer than your bulb setting. In other words is if the camera is going to take a one second exposure you can't have an interval of one second or it won't bas basically won't have time for the card to write to the, to the camera before it takes its next exposure. So if I had a, a bulb setting of let's say one second I would want, probably want to have an interval setting of at least two seconds. And um, in the case of long exposure time lapses where you're shooting at night is often I'll have a like let's, let's say a 15 second bulb setting and then I will also set up noise reduction on my camera which takes it another 15 seconds to process and so that my minimal interval value that I can use for uh, that night time lapse is about 30 seconds. So for a 15 second exposure I'm using a uh, 30 second interval. However, if I had noise reduction off, I might be able to say, okay, I've got a 15 second exposure and I'm going to do a 20 second interval. The important thing to remember is that your interval has to be longer than your bulb value, okay, or your exposure value. Okay, and the final uh, setting here is the number setting and that sets the number of exposures. And so you can set this to, you know, anywhere between uh, 0 and 999 exposures in this intervalometer or you can set it to unlimited. So if I go over here and I go to the number setting here and I go into the settings here and I press the up arrow, up arrow or down arrow and you'll just get two dashes there and that's unlimited. So that will basically keep doing exposures as long as you've got room on your card or battery in your camera. And so this is a setting that I usually use uh, because I usually don't limit myself to a certain number of exposures. And so I'll just set this to unlimited and let it click away until the, either the card is filled up or the battery runs down or I just simply come up and stop the, uh, the time lapse sequence. Okay, and the only uh, other final thing that I would worry about is the, the, the uh, beep uh, setting here and you can set it to beep or not to beep. I often, uh, most often just turn the beep to off because I'll hear the camera clicking anyway and so I'll hear the shutter of the uh, click on the camera. So, um, so, but for some people they like to have the beep setting just to make sure that they're, uh, they're continually taking pictures. So that's the basics of an intervalometer and I hope that you found that helpful. Be sure to uh, subscribe to our YouTube page and come visit us at skylapser.com. Mm -hmm.